Hi everyone and welcome to my channel where I talk about movies and today I'm going to continue on <clears throat> with a series of Criterion Classics, I call them films that I have, the Criterion releases that I have in my collection that I have not made single videos on. We are in the midst of the Criterion November 2023 Barnes & Noble hat price sale. So I thought it would uh, be appropriate to, uh, to talk about uh, some of these uh, classics that people might not have or might not be that familiar with. So today I'm going to <clears throat> talk about Kiss Me Deadly. This is from 1955. What a year. My last video was on All That Heaven Allows, also from 1955. And this is directed by Robert Aldridge from a screenplay by A.I. Bezerides. I'm probably mispronouncing his name. Starring Ralph Meeker as Mike Hammer from a novel by Mickey Spillane. Now, Mickey Spillane in 1955 was the greatest best-selling novelist of all time. <laughs> uh, it, it is, on the supplements, it says that at one point, seven of the top ten books on the New York Times bestseller list were written by Mickey Spillane. So move over, Colleen Hoover. <laughs> and it's really incredible that that's the case because I've only read one Mickey Spillane novel. Believe me, that's enough to last a lifetime. They are, they are truly awful, but for some reason, they... Uh, they hit a chord in, in this era of this era of paranoia. And Spillane and his character Mike Hammer is kind of a, a celebration of misogyny uh, and, uh, and a celebration of toxic uh, masculinity, machismo, and all encased in an ultra right wing uh, political message. Uh, uh, the time of the paranoia of the Red Scare. Um, it, it, in one of the novels, Mickey Spillane kills 10 people, and he laughs about it. He jokes about it. Yeah, I killed them. Uh, but they were all commies. <laughs> They're all scum. They deserve to die. Mike Hammer is, in the books, he is judge and jury. Um, and I remember Mickey Spillane from Imperial talk shows back in the 60s, and and he would come on in almost like a comic act in his excessive misogyny. Uh, so, what is Robert Aldridge, a left-winger, <laughs> and A.I. Bezzarides, another left-winger, why are they making a film about Mike Hammer from a Mickey Splane novel? They throw out most of the novel. Uh, but that's part of the fun of this movie. There's this tension. This, we're, we're seeing Mike Hammer. Now, he's not, uh, there's no overt uh, right-wing politics here, maybe in one scene, uh, but uh, Mike Hammer is brutal, and he revels in his violence. He's sadistically brutal. So we have this tension where he is being criticized, <laughs> even as he is our hero, <laughs> our anti-hero, as it were. Uh, and, and he is, so in that regard at least, he is part of the, part of the uh, Mickey Spillane conce conception of it. But he's, he's, he, in, in Mickey Spillane's conception, um, he is a he is a, a PI on basically on the on the lookout for commies. This Mike Hammer is a basically he he um, and his secretary slash girlfriend <laughs> set up men. He's a divorce a private detective. So women want to divorce their husband. Uh, his Mike's secretary Velda will will have a liaison and then there would be evidence for a divorce. So he's really the scum of the earth. But he is our hero. He is our anti-hero. In some ways, we've got to identify with him because he's on a quest. So if he's on this quest, we have to be on that quest as well. And he is, he is the knight, the knight errant we are following. And it helps that he's played by Ralph Meeker, who was just born to play Mike Hammer. I mean, he is really... Uh, he, he, he really fits the bill here, and in in, in certainly in his masculinity. Uh, but there is some redeeming qualities to Mike. Uh, he does rescue damsels in distress. He is willing to, <laughs> to help people out. Um, uh, and uh, women, and in the opening sequence, the fam uh, very famous opening sequence, we see a woman in a trench coat uh, running frantically on a dark highway. 
and she runs right out in front of Mike Hammer's uh, souped-up uh, Jaguar, and and. He, and although he's mad because he has to almost crash his car, he does help her out. And she keeps saying to him, remember me, remember me, two words that will haunt the rest of this movie. Um, and then Mike almost gets himself killed <laughs> in, that, in an accident because the people chasing this woman are uh, hot on his tail. He doesn't realize that. So when he wakes up, he figures, what the heck is going on here? I've got to find out what this is about. Maybe there's a big payday at the end of my quest. Uh, I, I don't have to do divorce, dirty laundry divorce stuff. I, I can get on something really big here. And he's, he's well off in this divorce. I mean, he lives in this great apartment in LA. The movies, are, the books are set in New York City. And he also, and this is a film about L.A. I mean, this is great to see L.A. There's so many locations, and all these locations are pointed out in the commentary. Uh, what happened to them, what's still there. Uh, a lot of it is filmed in the Bunker Hill uh, section of L.A. that I think was totally demolished um, in, in subsequent years. Uh, so we get this great L.A. feel, but we also, in the interiors, we get this great feel of uh, the architecture, the checkerboard floors. Mike even has this uh, uh, tape recorder that's sort of embedded in his walls, an answering machine, uh, well before uh, answering machines became common. So, uh, and, and as part of the, as he looks for the great what's and he gets involved with these different women, Part of the critique of the character is provided by the females in this in this movie. The the woman he he picks up is played by Cloris Leachman. Uh, she is uh, in this publicity photo. <laughs> Mike is surrounded by the women in his life. All that all of them critique him, uh, and uh, Cloris Leachman does. Uh, here's Velda. This is his secretary, uh, girlfriend, lover. Uh, and uh, and she's played by Maxine Carr, and uh, she's very, she's very good. But boy, she gives Mike, what are you doing? What what are you looking for? Mike manages to get his friends killed. He's he's not a smart guy, <laughs> and he's gotten in way over his head. He has no idea what he's doing here. There's been a federal. Uh, investigative group that interrogates Mike. He has no idea. I mean, he just picked up a girl. Uh, so there must be something really big here. The L.A. Detective Force, Wesley a Addy, also in a lot of Aldridge films, plays the detective that keeps telling Mike, you got to stay out of this. But he's on a quest, and we're on a quest, too. We want to know what's happening because we're not giving any backstory. We just follow. We see what Mike sees. Uh, so, and the other, the other femme fatale here is Gabby Rogers, and she is, she is just simply incredible. This is an incredible performance by Gabby Rogers. And, uh, and uh, but we also get, um, we also get um, a, uh, a whole group of actors that you will recognize and that would go on to uh, some uh, other, um, very significant and popular, memorable roles. We have Jack Elam. I think this is Jack Lambert early on. They play the, the uh, gangsters that uh, are no match for uh, Mike Hammer's brutality. <laughs> no match at all. And uh, we also get Strother Martin in a very early role. He plays a very nervous, edgy guy telling, trying to tell Mike a story. Um, and we get the immortal Percy Helton. And this is a film, if you're a Percy Helton fan, and some film noir uh, lovers uh, always look for Percy Helton. He is a older, bald, rotund uh, character, actor with this high-pitched, uh, almost mouse-like, uh, screeching voice. And he, and Aldridge and Bezzerides gives him a great uh, scene here. And there's other, there's other character actors that uh, I didn't know their name, but they look very familiar. And every, every performance here is, 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 is really uh, uh, top-notch. And 
Uh, and this is the time of uh, the definitive package of a classic film that coming out of uh, from Criterion. I don't know if they would do as much for a film like this uh, nowadays as they did. I don't know when this came out, but uh, we get a great commentary. I mean, this is the second one in a row. The whole I had in the last had a great one. Uh, Kiss Me Deadly has one by Alan Silver and James Orsini. I forget which one of them. One of them wrote a uh, the definitive. Uh, book on Aldridge's films called uh, Whatever Happened to Robert Aldridge. Um, this is a great commentary. I mean, if you love this film, you got to listen to this because, I mean, they they show you the, you know, they, they comment on the locations, which is fascinating enough in itself, but they also give you so much of the backstory of uh, of Aldridge. And uh, Aldridge, uh, he didn't get blacklisted, and uh, why didn't he get blacklisted? <laughs> because he had worked as an assistant director to many dir uh, directors who were blacklisted, like Joseph Losey, he, assist he was the assistant on Monster of Doom for uh, Charlie Chaplin, who was never officially blacklisted, but he went to live in Europe uh, to escape uh, the uh, the witch hunt, and uh, he, he never he didn't come back for many years late until many years later, and uh, Aldridge. Uh, uh, when Joseph Losey moved to England to live and to find work, um, uh, Aldridge helped him out financially. But Aldridge was, uh, he, he came from the Rockefeller family. <laughs> he was wealthy. <laughs> and he was a producer as well as a director. And they basically went at the, the uh, UAC basically went after writers and directors and actors. Producers would thought, well, they got to be capitalism because it was all about capitalism. Are you sufficiently enamored with capitalism? Are you critical of capitalism more than really America? Um, and uh, so he came from the Rockefeller family. In fact, his first cousin was Nelson Rockefeller, who later became governor of New York and also vice president of the United States. Um, so, uh, and Bezzarides was, was what they call, was not on the blacklist, but he was on the gray list. Because he had written a screenplay for Thieves Highway for Jules Dassin, who also had to go to Europe to escape the blacklist and find work in France. Um, and uh, so, studios were wary of the gray listed uh, uh, screenwriters, and plus he was a very irascible figure. One of the other supplements on this Criterion release is a portrait of Bizarides, and he was he was quite a character. Uh, so in the booklet, uh, we get the a terrific "The Thriller of Tomorrow" by essay by uh, Jim Hoberman, uh, and then we also get a article that Robert Aldridge wrote himself. You can't hang up the meat hook, and he wrote this back in 1955. I forget it was published in a newspaper or magazine defending the violence in this film because he knew this was going to be a toughie. This was not, you know, the rating systems and the local censors. They weren't going to like this movie, the, the, and in particular, uh, the violence. Uh, but uh, it, it basically got through. And in the final third of this film, as the quest develops, in the final third, we get, we get to know what the great what's it is. The, the last act of this film turns the film noir, the noir aspects, into sort of a science fiction, a horrifying science fiction, with one of the great endings, I think, the most powerful endings. I, when I first saw this ending, <laughs> I, I couldn't sleep at night. Um, all our paranoia about the times we were living in, even though I was fairly small, you, you absorbed the paranoia and the ending of this film. <laughs> left left me stunned. Kiss me deadly. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen. I do appreciate it. Comments are welcome. Take care.